using your WIC card provided by the Minnesota Department of Health WIC program. Your new WIC card is fast, saves you time at the checkout, flexible, buy what you want when you need it, simple. All your WIC benefits on one card. Hi, I'm Maddie. I've been using my family's new WIC card that I recently got from my WIC clinic. I would like to share what you can expect with your new card. Our WIC card looks like this. It has my family's card number on the front. On the back of the card, it has the magnetic stripe that allows me to swipe it like any other debit or credit card. When I got the card, I learned this strip can be damaged by magnets or other electronics. So I try to keep our card away from these types of things to make sure it continues to work right. Otherwise, I have to go back to the WIC clinic to get it replaced. When they issued the card, they wrote our household ID on the signature panel, since they used that number to look my family up in their computers. The back of the card also has some ways to check our account balance, and a couple of good things to keep in mind about the card. When I first got our WIC card, the WIC clinic helped me set up our card's four-digit PIN right then and there. I chose a four-digit number. It was our dog's birthday. It's easy for me to remember, but hard for others to guess. To keep my WIC food safe, I didn't write my PIN on the card or even on a sticky note in my wallet. If I did either of those things, think how easy it would be for someone to take our card and PIN and buy all of my family's food. That's why I chose an easy to remember PIN number. Instead of signing with my signature for any WIC foods that I buy, I use my PIN. I can share my PIN with anyone I trust enough to use our WIC card and to help me shop. Right now, only my mother and sister help me shop, so I've told them my PIN, but no one else. To set my PIN, we called the eWIC customer service number on the back of the WIC card. I can call that number at any time, day or night, if I need to reset or change my PIN. I entered the number on the front of our card, my birthday, and my zip code where I received my mail. Then I entered my PIN, and I entered it a second time to make sure it was right. And that was that. It was really quick. I could have set it up on my own outside of the WIC clinic, but it was nice to be able to leave with it all set up and ready to use. I wasn't really sure why they needed our zip code, so I asked the WIC person helping me. She said they used that information to help ensure that I am who I say I am when I call eWIC customer service. If we move and our zip code changes, I need to let the WIC clinic know so that they can update our mailing address. Then they pass it on to eWIC customer service. The eWIC customer service can only help me if they have our current mailing address from the WIC clinic. So, I just keep my WIC clinic up to date whenever our address changes. I can check my account balance using either the eWIC customer service phone number or the WIC card website. So, I added the phone number to my contacts, and the first time I used the website, I added it to my browser favorites. All my family's WIC foods are added to our card for one, two, or three months. It just depends on when we need to come back to the WIC clinic. They always let me know when we should come back. And the next time we go back, they'll add more foods to our same WIC card. When I first got our card, I wasn't sure how I was going to know when I could start buying each month's food and when they expired. But, after they loaded my family's food onto our card, they printed our shopping list. This lists all the foods for everyone in my family, and the dates when I can buy them. I can also see this same information immediately in my smartphone using the My Minnesota WIC app. WIC showed me where to download the app, and then I registered to receive appointment and account reminders. It's simple to check our balance and see our future food benefits. And it's really cool because unlike the shopping list, it updates every time I buy something so that it always has our most current account information. Before I go shopping, I always check our account balance because each time I buy WIC foods, our account balance changes. Since our WIC foods also expire, usually after 30 days, I like to know our balance and the last date I can use them. I want to know what I can buy and by what date I need to buy everything. There are lots of ways for me to do this. Whenever they add food to our WIC card at the WIC clinic, they will print that shopping list for us if I want one. But it's only right until I buy something. 
The easiest way for me to see our current balance is to use my Minnesota WIC app. Since I'm registered, I can open the app, press Household Benefits, and then the Current button. I can see what foods I have left to buy and the last date I can purchase them, which ends at midnight on that date. Checking my last receipt is another easy way to know our current balance. After I shop with my WIC card, the receipt shows what I bought, and at the bottom it shows what I have left to buy and the last date I can buy them. I just tear off the bottom of the receipt that shows my WIC balance and keep it in my wallet with my WIC card. That makes it easy to find the next time I go shopping. I can also use eWIC customer service. On the back of our card are both the website and the toll-free phone number. I can use my computer or smartphone to check my account balance online. With just my WIC card number, wherever I am, I'm just a click or two away from seeing our balance. When I call the phone number, I simply enter my card number and choose Benefit Availability from the menu, and I can hear a list of all the foods I have left to buy. The Balance Inquiry is one more way to check my account balance at the store before I shop. I can let the customer service staff or cashier know that I'd like to check my WIC balance. Then I swipe my card, enter my PIN, and they give me a printout of what I have left. As you can see, I have lots of ways to see what WIC foods I can still buy and when I need to purchase them by. Because once midnight of the last date passes, any foods that I haven't bought won't roll over to the next month, and I'll have missed out on buying some of our WIC foods for that month. I can use our WIC card at any of the Minnesota WIC authorized stores. They gave me a list of stores near me when I first got our card, and I can always get another list from them if I need to. There's also a store locator in my Minnesota WIC app, which will show me WIC stores close to me and give directions to the store. This makes it easy to know where I can shop with my WIC card. One of the best things about shopping with my WIC card is that I can buy what I want, when I want. This means I don't have to buy all of my WIC foods at one time. I can buy them as I need them. WIC also gave me a shopping guide when I got my card. This shows me all the different types of WIC foods and the kinds that I can buy, as long as they are on my WIC card. In the My Minnesota WIC app, both the Food Finder and the Shopping Tips have a link to the online shopping guide. The app also has a Food Finder that lets me scan the UPC on a food package to see if it is WIC allowed. Since I registered when I downloaded the app, it'll even tell me if the food item is on my card and if I have enough in my account balance to buy it. This makes it easy to know whether or not I can buy something with my WIC card. At the WIC clinic, they told me using the WIC card at checkout may be a little bit different depending on the store. Some stores are able to scan my WIC foods and anything else I buy together. Other stores will need me to buy my WIC foods separate from anything else. That's why the first time I shop at any store, I let the cashier know it's my first time using my WIC card at their store. The cashier is always really helpful and tells me what I need to do. And then I know what to do the next time I shop there. WIC also suggested I separate my WIC foods from anything else I might be buying so that it's easier to make sure my WIC card pays for them. My very first time shopping with my WIC card, the cashier at the store I went to told me I didn't have to separate my WIC foods from the other things I was buying. She explained that their registers know which foods are part of my WIC benefits and which aren't, so she could ring everything up together. But I have found it's easier to make sure my WIC card pays for everything I'm expecting it to if I keep things separate. So I just group my WIC foods together at the checkout. When I got my WIC card, they told me I should always pay with my WIC card first, then snap EBT if I had it, and then pay for the rest however I usually would. The cashier will always tell me when to swipe my WIC card and enter my PIN. Remember, never give your PIN to the cashier. You always want to enter it yourself. At some point, she'll give me a receipt that shows exactly what my WIC card is paying for. I always check it over to make sure everything I expect WIC to pay for is on the receipt. If the receipt looks right, only then do I accept my WIC purchase on the PIN pad. If there's a problem, I can always decline instead so we can figure out why WIC isn't paying for something I'm expecting it to pay for. If I'm buying other things, the cashier will tell me what I still need to pay for, which I pay for next using my SNAP EBT, then however else I want to pay. 
The last time my mom went to the store for me, she forgot the pin. The pin locked after she entered it wrong four times, and she wasn't able to use the WIC card. We could have called the customer service phone number to reset it, but it was only locked until midnight, and then I was able to use it again the next day. It's good to know, though, that we can call customer service at any time and reset or change our PIN if we need to. There have been a couple of times when I thought I was buying something with my WIC card and it didn't ring up as a WIC food. Once, when I used my WIC card, I was buying some juice and eggs. The eggs rang up fine, but the juice didn't. The cashier told me this sometimes happens with juice because there are two different sizes, they look almost the same, and only one is allowed with WIC. The cashier had the WIC shopping guide handy and we saw that 59 ounce juice wasn't allowed. I just grabbed the wrong size. She was willing to call someone to get the right juice for me, but since I don't have to buy everything all at once, I declined the purchase and asked her to remove it, and then just bought the eggs and got the juice the next time I went shopping. There was another time when a jar of peanut butter didn't ring up. I've always bought this type of peanut butter, so I didn't bother to scan it with my app. When I did scan it, I was really surprised when the app gave me a message that the peanut butter wasn't wick allowed. I was sure it had to be wrong. When I told the cashier I've always been able to buy it before, she was really nice, but she said there isn't anything a cashier can do to override the register, and that some foods may have been incorrectly allowed before. She showed me that the shopping guide said no spreads. I'd never even noticed that on the jar before. The main thing to always keep in mind is that if the register doesn't ring an item up as a WIC food, then there is nothing the cashier can do. This can sometimes happen with brand new food products that aren't in the system yet, and sometimes I just have to wait and try again, or buy something else. Since there are a lot of WIC foods to choose from, this isn't usually too much of a problem. And mostly, shopping with my WIC card goes smoothly. The other day, I stopped at a small grocery store by my work to pick up milk and some things for dinner. At that store, there was only one cash register that took the WIC card, but there was a sign posted so I knew which lane to go to. When I told the cashier it was my first time shopping there, she told me I just needed to separate my WIC foods from my other groceries. She rang up all my WIC foods together and I paid for them with my WIC card. Then she rang up everything else so I could pay for them separately. Even when my WIC foods are rung separately, it's still easy, and having my WIC foods rung up separately made it really easy to make sure all my WIC foods scan correctly. It seems like a lot to remember, but I found that everyone, both at the WIC clinic and the stores where I shop, have been really helpful. I like my WIC card because it lets me buy what I want or need when I want to or need to, which gives me a lot more flexibility when shopping. And I love having all of my family's WIC foods on one card. It makes it so simple. I thought it might be hard to know what I can buy, but I always know my current balance. I can use my Minnesota WIC app, look at my last receipt, or use the customer service phone line or website, and that makes it really easy. So, just remember, keep your cards safe and your PIN secret, and never be afraid to ask questions. I really hope you like using your WIC card as much as my family and I do. This was provided by the Minnesota Department of Health WIC program. Thank you for taking the time to view this. Special thanks and consideration go to Oregon, Montana, Maine, and Vermont WIC for their WIC training from which we borrowed.